Father's Day. We're going to start with Abraham. Abraham was a good dad. First time God spoke to Abraham, he told him, get out of your heathen's family and go to a country that I'm going to give you. Abraham waited until later on you'll read that particular verse. You have to read almost seven other books in the Bible before you come to the point where it says that Abraham no. waited till his daddy passed away. Hmm. But you got to read about seven books before you get to that verse. So Abraham decides I'm going to leave because God has spoken to me. God really loved Abraham. Abraham is the father of the Jews. He's also the father of the Muslims. But Abraham, uh, the Bible says, he believed the Lord and it was counted for him for righteousness. You want to be righteous? Real simple. All you got to do is believe in the Lord. Amen. Believe in the Lord. And I don't just mean, well, I believe in God because everybody tells you I believe in God. Everybody, every door you knock on says I believe in God. Every person you talk to says I believe in God. You believe in Jesus? I believe in Jesus. Well, great. That's wonderful. But that's not it. You got to learn uh, to have the Lord as a personal relationship. Um, you know, I always put it like this. Two men can go to the altar. Both men can get on their knees. Both men can pray the same prayer. Lord Jesus, save me. Forgive me of my sins. I want to go to heaven. Change me. One man will get up, born again, saved, going to heaven, and the other person will not because they said the words, but in their soul and in their heart, they did not believe it. That's the difference in believing in God. Both can say the same thing. But that doesn't mean that one doesn't believe it from the heart. Yeah, I get to the point for a man to get saved, they actually have to believe they're lost. You gotta get lost before you can get saved. Mm -hmm. So, I remember a preacher telling me one time, he says, when well, you meet somebody, they're not really sure, he tells them, why don't you just pray and see about hell, see if you're going there or not. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want to do is wake up screaming and hollering about hell. I told that to uh, a young man. And uh, I said, uh, me and my wife were getting married. Before we got married, I had already got an apartment. And I was living in the apartment. Three o'clock in the morning, I wake up, I see a black man being chased by devils and demons. He looks scared to death. He's running around. And I'm having this nightmare and I can't wake up. And the next thing I know, I wake, I wake up. I'm in a sweat. I go to work. No big deal. I've had a nightmare. My mom, which was alive at the time at the grocery store, I was going to take over and she says, did you hear about our neighbor? I said, what happened? He said, at 3 o'clock this morning, our black neighbor right down the street passed away. Um, I saw him die. He was being chased. Mm. He didn't make it. Mm. He said, well, I don't believe in stuff like that. I'll give you another one. I had a friend of mine. He was a dope smoking buddy back in the day. He said, I used to work at a morgue. I said, really? 
He said, yeah, I used to clean all the floors in the morgue, and I'd have to sweep them and mop them. All hospitals have a morgue, right? Yeah. And they'd sweep them and mop them, he said, you know, and I, you didn't need a big education. You just had to be willing to do it. They'd hire anybody. He said, I'm sitting there in the morgue, mopping up, and he said, the next thing I know, I see this body pop up. And he's sitting up. What happened? He said, the guy started saying, I'm on fire, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. And then he lay back down. Hmm. I said, no. I wasn't saved. I wasn't going to church. I wasn't doing anything. But it sounded like a pretty bad experience for that guy. Hmm. They tried to... You know, bring them back, and pop them a few times, you know, electrocute them or whatever they call that thing. Couldn't get them. Mm -hmm. He died. My cousin, Terry, when her husband, when her daddy died, he was a heroin addict. He had real good friends. He got, he overdosed. So his buddies are driving down the street in the uh, hood. And you know what they did, Caitlin? They opened the door and they threw them in the, in the ditch because they didn't want to get busted. Rolled them in the ditch. We went to the funeral and I told my cousin, I said, what's the matter? I said, you know, don't worry about it. You know, your, dad, your dad's in a better place. Again, I was not going to church, didn't know nothing about God. She says, you don't understand. Every night I wake up with my dad screaming, coming, putting his hands, trying to grab me and bring me into hell. <laughs> That'll scare the bejeebies out of you. Yeah. Mm. So if you're not sure if you're going to heaven or hell, this is what you got to ask God. God, would you please give me a real good nightmare about yeah. hell so I can prove the hell I they can prove to me I'm not going to heaven? It may scare me. It may be worse than the purge, but at least I'll know the truth. Thank you for the commercial interruption. Back to the message. Abraham! Good daddy. He's a good dad. He waited till he was 60. He did not ask God if he could take Lot with him. Family always wants to be with family. God didn't want any family. He just wanted Abraham. Abraham left. God said he was a righteous man because he was willing to do what God said. Even when it meant no sense. If you're going to be a spiritual person, you got to be willing to do things that you've prayed about, you've fasted about, you've meditated about, and said, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. He was the righteous father. Say, so how do you know? Mm -hmm. Well, he took his son and he took a mule and went up a mountain and his son said, what are we going to do? We're going to sacrifice to the Lord. He said, that's great, Dad. I've been on these sacrifices before. But where's the... Where's the sheep? He said, God will provide his own sacrifice. He didn't know it at the time, but he was going to be the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When he got there, he tied up his boy and put him on top of the wood. You know what the Bible doesn't say? His boy did not struggle. You know why? His daddy had told him about God. His daddy knew enough about God. His son trusted him enough to know if my daddy says this is what God wants, I will come back alive again. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it.
and his son never. The Bible doesn't say that he ever tried to get away from his father. Abraham gets in the zone. The zone is when you are preaching and you can't hear anybody or any noise or any activity around you, even though all hell is breaking loose in your church. Your job is to present the message regardless of what's going on. Abraham was in that position. He took a knife, put it in his hand. He was fixing to kill his only son, Isaac. And then God said, Abraham, Abraham. He had to call his name out. He had to call it out twice because he was in the zone. And then God said, I really know that you love me. A righteous dad is going to do and is going to follow after God. He's going to make sure his family's in church. He's going to make sure his children are in church. He's going to make sure that everyone he knows and loves and his household is going to heaven. That is a good father. A good father, according to the world standards, is he provides. And a good father should. He should provide love, emotion. He should provide security, a home. He should provide leadership. There's a lot of good qualities in a father. Uh, he needs to make sure that his family has food on the table. It doesn't have to be the best food, but it has to be food. We used to eat. We would buy groceries based on, when we first got married, buy the meal. We'd buy one pack of hamburger meat. We knew exactly what that hamburger meat was going to go for. We bought one package of chicken. We knew exactly where every piece of chicken was going to go for. It. We were that broke. I mean, we would have tostadas for dinner. You know what tostadas are? That's a fried corn tortilla with beans, lettuce, tomatoes, and a little cheese, and hot sauce. That was our vegetarian meal. I was a vegetarian at one time. Just that one meal. We, you know, we'd buy a big pack of corn. One day we'd have mega. One day we'd have enchilada. One day we had top. We were going to eat every tortilla in that corn package. A father is to provide everything. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, every aspect of his family, but the most important thing of all is to pray that his children and that his family go to heaven. Who cares in a hundred years when we're all dead that you provided T-bone steaks for the barbecue? Nobody is going to care. Nobody's going to care that you bought somebody a brand new Porsche in a hundred years after you're dead. Nobody will care. The only thing they're going to care about in a hundred years is where they're at. And there's only two places. You're either going to be in the very warm spot a little hot down there. Or are you going to be in glory with the Lord? One of the two. And a father wants to make sure that his family gets there. 
And he's willing to do whatever it takes. Many a time, I've had to pull away from the table and say, I'm not eating. I would fast. I think the longest fast I had was 90 days. I lost 100 pounds. I don't think I could do it again. I'm too old now. But I wanted to make sure my family was going to be taken care of spiritually. Because that's the most important thing. My model for being a good father is God. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. God the Father, and the Bible says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God loved us so much that He said, well, should I fast? No, that's not good enough. What can I provide? Well, I give Him an earth. I give Him a whole planet. Make a life for themselves. I can provide the material things that they're going to need. They're going to have to work for it, but I will at least give it to them. But I will also provide a way for a spiritual benefit for those that want to go to heaven. And he says, I love everybody so much, God is not willing that any any should perish. You know what any means? Nobody. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. Hell was never intended for us. Hell was intended for the devil and all the demonic forces. It was never intended for us. You talk about a love where Christ is hanging on a cross. He's dying between two thieves. And God says, I am well pleased. Every time they tortured the Lord, whether they whipped his back or whether they pulled on his beard, the Bible says that God was pleased because he knew that Christ was paying the price. Now, there is no greater love that a dad can give than what God the Father gave. Abraham was a tremendous father because he was almost willing to give up his... He was going to give up his son. That's how come Abraham is a friend of God. He was willing to do it. And Abraham was willing to do it because he knew God's going to give me back my son. Sooner or later, I may not see him in this world, but I'll see him in the next. God is going to give me back my son. Good father. And God said, don't do it. I got to sacrifice. But it came to the point where God the Father looked at his children that he had created, and he created us, and said, they have really screwed up. What am I going to do? And the decision he came up with, emotionally, I cannot think of doing myself. I don't think there is a dad anywhere that is emotionally capable of doing that. I think there's a lot of dads that are willing to pay the price of death for their children. They're willing to die for their children. But to allow their son to die for people that hate him, despise him, curse him, I, I, I cannot understand that. But that's the perfect father. That's the perfect picture of a father. A father puts up with all the abuse. 
when his children are upset, when they hurt, he hurts. When they mourn, he mourns. When they need help, all he can do is cry out and say, can I help? A father is willing to bend over backwards. My dad, I've used this before, my dad, he died. He had one pair of shoes. Old tennis shoes. Old britches. Never bought anything new. I think we bought him a, a jacket when my mom passed away. A new suit. Other than that, he had no clothes. Because he gave everything away to what he considered his children. That's what a father does. A father sacrifices for the ones he loves. A mother does the same thing. She sacrifices. How do you become a good father? A good mother? A good husband? A good wife? Yeah, you're going to have to pray and ask God, Lord, I don't want to be a selfish brat anymore. I'm tired of being <coughs> selfish. Would you help me to be a loving person, a giving person? It's hard to get out of that rut, that, that rut where all you think about is me. Because that's the generation we live in. Me, me, me. And the father and the dad, all he thinks about is my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. That's what a good dad does. All I care about is them. Will you have some brats out there? Absolutely. You're going to have brat children, brat grandchildren, Right, great grandchildren. Do you still love them? Absolutely. Do you still want to help them? Absolutely. So let me ask you this. What kind of person do you want to be? What is the most important thing that you want for your family and your friends? Mine is... I don't want them to go with me to heaven. In a hundred years, nothing matters what we've done today. What matters is that one decision. And that one decision is, what am I going to do with Christ? I tell people all the time, I said, the reason people go to hell is not because of your sins. It's not because of the things you've done wrong. All of that was forgiven on the cross. Christ died for every sin. There is no sin that has not been paid for. The only reason a person goes to hell is they look at Christ and they say, man, ain't nobody told you to die for me. It's my life. I'm going to live it the way I want. I really don't care. Have a nice day. Now when you stand before God, God's going to say, you remember when you said that? I'm sorry. You get one life and one life only. That's to make one decision. And every dad's job is to pray and beg God, please, let my children and the ones they love please go to heaven and do whatever you got to do. I want to see him again. I want to see him. So this morning the question would be, what kind of person you want to be?
is that your desire or is your desire to party, party, party till your last breath? Your choice, your life. Pick one. Have an emotional life or have a spiritual and logical life. Your choice. Father, we love you. I pray, God, you'd help us this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah, we made it!